no matter what the cause is, whether it's bony growth or a disc herniation or stenosis, the solution is still going to be the same in order to get out of the problem. You need to create more support for your spine. Today's topic is all the different things that can cause sciatic type symptoms, herniated disc, bulging disc, stenosis, facet pain, facet joint syndrome, bony growths, soft tissues, and other muscular type tissues that can press on a nerve through inflammation, causing the symptoms of sciatica, what people call sciatica, in your hips and legs and thighs. So we're gonna be able to look at all the anatomy and an incredibly detailed view and zoom in on what's going on with the discs and the nerves and when a disc actually bulges and herniates. So you can see how many nerves are flowing through the body and muscles that get inflamed or any soft tissue that gets inflamed and maybe swells up a little bit can also press on one of these nerves. Uh, when we associate nerve symptoms with an actual diagnosis, even if you've had an MRI, even if you've had a doctor look at it and say, you have this disease in your back, we still can't really ever be sure exactly what's causing the nerve symptoms because there are so many nerves, even every single nerve, if you follow one nerve along, it could get compressed at any point during its journey down the leg. And that's where you feel symptoms of pain or tingling, numbness, could be heat, could be cold, burning sensation, electrical, uh, pins and needles, you name it. The nerve can actually feel anything. It can make you feel anything. And it's pretty incredible the wide range of symptoms that you can get from is something pressing on a nerve. So when you see the nerves, they come out of the spinal cord here and go through the foramen, as we call them in the vertebrae. You have the anterior nerve roots, and these are the sensory nerve roots. These are all sensory nerves here, and they flow closer to the disc, and they join together with the motor nerves, which come out of the posterior side of the spinal cord, and then they form a full nerve. When you have a disc that herniates, for example, like this, or bulges, it's most likely going to press on the sensory nerves before it presses on the motor nerves. The motor nerves are more protected because they are behind the sensory nerve. This is another angle. We have the spinal cord that is behind the bone here, um, but you can really see how the nerve roots or the spinal nerves exit through the holes. So this would be a lateral foramen, this hole here. You could call this potentially L4 or L5 nerve that exits out of that foramen. And this would be how potentially a nerve could get compressed in a stenosis situation. So if this foramen gets closed down, this hole right here, this gap gets closed down by a decrease in space. Say you get stuck in kind of a stenosis or backward bending position in your spine because of anterior pelvic tilt or muscle imbalances, and this part of the disc starts getting compressed, the space decreases and the nerve can get compressed by bone. So that's another way that you could experience similar symptoms like sciatica. And here is another image I found very interesting. This is the facet joint that connects the vertebrae above. Say this was L4 vertebrae, and this is the spinous process. It has a joint called the facet, and that joins together with the L5 vertebrae. This is the spinous process of L5. That's how they interconnect. Aside from the disc, this is the other spot where they interconnect. You can see how the nerves, when they come out of the foramen, there's just little branches that come off at, in all different places. And they're connecting with other nerves or going and uh, innervating different parts of the anatomy. And this joint can get inflamed. It really does help hold the vertebrae from sliding on one another, like in a spondylolisthesis situation. So when you have like an injury like a spondylolisthesis, this joint is preventing the slippage. But if it, there's so much force that it causes, say, a vertebrae to slide forward against the force of this joint, it actually can break. And that would be a spondylolysis, a, a pedicle fracture. This is uh, what happens after you get a fusion surgery. And so you can see that they actually put some bone in between the two vertebrae. That bone actually literally fuses into the other bones. You got two vertebrae here, but they have now become one bone. And that takes time. So that's why it is really important if one were to ever get a fusion to allow time for this fusion to take place. And it can do it naturally. So you can actually get a natural fusion, which is another thing that can happen. So if a spondy occurs to 
where two vertebrae end up touching each other, say L4 and L5 just naturally start touching each other, those bones can fuse together naturally. That is actually a really great thing that the body does because it's a natural protective mechanism. Sometimes the body needs to fuse itself to develop stability. So here's another image that I found that you can really see the different parts of the disc, the annulus and the nucleus, and you can really see the spinal cord. So this is actually a specific level. This would be L5. And I know this because at the L5 level, the spinal cord starts separating into what they call the cauda equina. And it's where all the nerves start coming out of the bottom of the spinal cord separately, like a cauda equina is, means horse's tail. So you could imagine it starts looking like a horse's tail and it's how the spinal cord ends. So this is the anterior side. I've actually showed this image in the past and you can just see how the spinal cord is starting to separate into that cauda equina. All those nerves kind of starts looking like a horse's tail where they start separating out as opposed to this when the spinal cord is one solid cord. You can see the difference. The spinal cord is a bunch of like thick hairs and this would be the L5 nerve coming around. Uh, you can see that that's the foramen there. Here's another image. Now this is another way that a nerve can get compressed and this is not actually a herniation of the disc. This is bony growth, calcium buildup on the actual vertebrae and that can build up so much that it does close down this foramen, this lateral foramen, closing down the space and pressing on a nerve. When people have symptoms of sciatica or the proper term is usually radiculopathy, so nerve referral symptoms in the legs. It's not necessarily from a herniated disc. There are several different causes that it could be from. It is beneficial at times to know what are the causes, but most of the time I would say that no matter what the cause is, whether it's bony growth or a disc herniation or stenosis, the solution is still going to be the same. It doesn't really change what you need to do in order to get out of the problem. You need to create more support for your spine. So there's less compression and less pressure uh, causing these problems. But what it does help to get diagnosed a really, really specific condition like this is it would help a surgeon if you were going to get surgery to determine what type of surgery you were going to get. I think that's the most beneficial thing. And so it could be a soft tissue. It could be the muscles. It could be the vertebrae. It could be the disc. It could be bony growth. Um, these are all things that could cause symptoms, but it's most likely not going to change what you need to do for your body because all of these different diagnoses are symptoms of a spine that needs more support, that needs more muscular balance around it, that needs to be decompressed a little bit. We don't have problems from a spine that is too decompressed, right? The problems are from too much compression and too much pressure, not enough support for the spine. The solution, no matter what is the cause, is probably going to be developing more support for your spine through muscular balance and core connection in the muscles that surround your lumbar spine. That's the goal. And uh, luckily that is possible to do through things like your breath and developing muscular balance through a healthy core connection. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you all for being here. And until next time, get down on the floor and connect to your core. All right, take care, everyone.